Hello, hello, and welcome to episode four of Shady Ladies, the Gambit Magazine, RuPaul's Drag Race podcast. Today we will be covering episode two of this fabulous season. I am Samir Roy, contributing editor, and joined, as always, by my podcasting devil. Hi. <laughs> I thought there was going to be more to that intro. No, I wanted to surprise you. <laughs> yeah, you definitely did. I never know what you're going to say, so it's always a surprise. I like that you change it up a lot. I was going to say, you got to change it up a little bit. You know, you can't keep it the same. It just gets stale otherwise, and you know... This whole show is about creativity. And it's why our relationship is always so fresh and exciting. I know. And this episode really took me for a loop. <coughs> like, oh. In a lot of ways. Took you for a loop? Like, like an air... Oh, God damn it. I can't remember. You're trying to find an airline joke in there. I was trying to remember the term for doing, like, you know, the Blue Angels when they do those loops and, like, they do the <laughs> danger zone, I don't know, air show. I... I Somebody once told me what it was at a party. They're like, oh, I just did a blah, blah, blah loop. I was like, I should remember that for a joke because that's a weird name. And I, of course, don't Maybe remember. you just need to hear that rock me like a hurricane song <laughs> to like bring it back. You need that. Like there's some sort of memory sense thing you need to, to do to bring it back. But nonetheless, <laughs> um, I thought that the <laughs> challenges in this episode were actually like really fun. One simply brilliant and the other like complex and crazy and totally amazing like it really was like something different I hadn't seen in drag really like, yeah I'm actually surprised that they hadn't really done something like that before it was it felt a, like a really good fit yeah and it was so like it was so unexpected it really like surprised you like they really actually are like up in the game with this show because that that whole like the glamazonian airways challenge of this episode which was Pretty much like the name of the episode, which everything was all about this challenge, and it really lived up to that. It was uh, really impressive. I was very impressed with. It was all the creation of Lucian Piani, the music guy for. Oh, your other this boy, show. your other my TV other boy show boyfriend. Oh my gosh, so beautiful, so adorable, and super talented apparently, because this was like a crazy concoction. This <laughs> whole thing, it was like you know, just to think that I want to imagine him putting this together because it was so many elements that somehow came together perfectly. And you wouldn't think that it would work. I do wonder where he pulled a lot of like the spoken word clips from. I know. Like, I think he created a lot of this. I mean, uh, also, I mean, he ha he does have a platinum record, so he does from I think producing the uh, hairspray soundtrack. Oh, the movie. okay. So he actually has a platinum record to his name too. Not man. that bad. Yes, but oh my goodness! So this episode's first challenge had to do with leaf blowers. Well, it had to do with them getting blown by the pit crew, but then we found out that it had to do with leaf blowers. We I had to say I was like slightly disappointed. I was like, what? Okay. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh. I like it when the pit crew gets involved. I know, well, I love I loved this pit crew. I was saying the new hot ginge. <laughs> like, you know, I know there's a, a, a hot ginger minge on the show, <laughs> but this ginge is like... I'm learning so much about your type. I mean, between your crush on everything. yeah, between your crush on Moby, I don't understand where it ever came from. But just he's not was. a silver fox; he's bald. I know, but he has gray beard, and <laughs> that's what makes him a silver fox. Yes, it's silvery, and it's even though he's like tiny, has that weird shaped head, and like yeah, the bald. Like there are only certain people that could pull that off, and he. I never bowled it I off. I wasn't quite sure what he was doing there, though. I don't know what either. What did his presence have to do with this challenge? I thought he was judging. He was judging, but like just because, <coughs> like I guess he and RuPaul like probably I like assume they're buddies. had lunch. Like, hey, let's do this. You should just come on the show. Like, it doesn't have to have really good reason. I'm sure you don't really have to. I'm sure RuPaul's had such a long career that over the years it's just met tons of people and people, tons of celebrities. Like I was telling you about um, Lennon Parham, who's like a huge Drag Race fan, and I follow her on Twitter. There's so many like, tons of people love Drag and of Race. Course, RuPaul I'm not surprised. And him were probably competing on like dance the dance charts and stuff with their music. Oh, that's probably true. And I actually wouldn't be surprised if, like, Moby helped produce, like, a more recent record of hers. I mean, she does one for every season. New I mean, one's she's... available on iTunes, and I, I actually <laughs> listen to it on Spotify Premium. But um, nonetheless... But she turns them out every season, so I wouldn't be surprised if there's some sort of, like, musical connection. But, yeah, I mean, his, his appearance as, like, guest mini-challenge judge was really random. And, yeah, that's all I have to say about Moby. I was just... But by the time it processed that... Oh, shit, here's Moby. What have you been up to? Oh, okay, bye. Like, that was kind of his appearance yeah. on the show. And they even kind of, like, built up to this thing because there was this whole, like, blowout with, like, Violet Tchotchke 
mm. saying like, it's like, I hate Michelle Visage. You know, and like, I just, like, she, I don't think she really, really hates her, but I think she was being really defensive like a, in the moment. I think that's like a little kid response to something. Yeah. Like when someone says something that you don't like about you. Well, it's like 20, 21, like really young and like oh, really yeah, super no. talented. So it's like obvious that it's like, Partly She'll age. get over She'll that. She'll get over it. Exactly. She will. You I know? think so. And because think like even as like the even as that episode kind of progressed, I would say that like she kind of toned down that attitude throughout the episode too. Which But like everyone kind of reacted so like seriously to it. And even on Twitter, I know. it was after really the show, weird. It was like a big thing. And even Michelle Visage was like, oh no, honey. Like on Twitter, and I was like, but I think that's part of promoting the show, you know, because that drama did exist in that moment in the show, and this is when we're seeing it. So they're playing along with this, like, new timeline for the audience as being the timeline of the show, even though they've already had that moment in the past and probably gotten over it. You know, but... Um, but Michelle Visage, Michelle Visage could have been commenting about how she felt also in the moment, in like, the when moment. it was recorded. Like, and Violet was kind of, not... like, playing back, I think, a little bit, like, too. Like, she's like, I still stand by, like, what I said, and kind of thing and I was like well why wouldn't you like that's how you felt in the moment well yeah if you take it back then it's gonna make you look like an asshole it's like why I would, would you... much rather that you say it like yeah I said it instead like, of being that's like that's how I felt no I did not I would never say that about Michelle she is my best friend and it's like it's on tape like yeah. we all saw it <laughs> so yeah, at least she like I feel up. like Violet like that's almost also part of her personality. It doesn't bother me. Maybe it's just because I've met way worse people in my life. I know, right? Like, and you've, met, I'm like, that, and um, you've met that person before. And, and you I've know met, like, that the that's bigger the, dick version of her, yeah. too, where you're just like, good God. You can tell with her that's not, like, the extent of her character. You no, really to can. a certain extent, you can also... You mainly just think, like, oh, it's just her age. A lot of it. Mm. And then a lot of it is being in this really super fucking weird situation. Like, seriously, like, you know, it, they tell us, like, oh, next week you'll be doing this, or next week... Last week, this happened, and it's like, yeah, last week was yesterday. Yeah, like, for them, <laughs> exactly. You know, like, it was, like, maybe a day in between, maybe, like, but, yeah, really, there's not that much time. And we've had this, like, a very similar conversation about, you know, Top Model as well. Like, any reality show where it's just, like, production schedule and, like, the way that it's distributed is, they're two different animals. And completely. that's what past queens have said, like, you know, like, they're like, what, well, you know, what they said, what they didn't realize about the show until they were on it was like, it really is a race. They're like, it moves so fast. And it's like, things are coming at you and you have to like change and like adapt. And it's like so many things are happening all at once that it can be really difficult for them to like really just catch up like with everything that they have heard and need to do and know that they want to do. Um, you know, it's hard to like meet that timeline because it moves so quickly. Like it really is a race. Um, but it feels less like a race, even though we can see how much of a race it is now by, by watching Untucked, like, in time with it, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, you're like, oh, okay, so, like, when they go back into the workroom, that's the beginning of the next episode. Like, you know, they don't even have any time to really process, they don't have a lot of time. They have that backstage time, which has been edited down, so it's probably, like, a couple hours, and then it's, like, back to work. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, okay, that's we're back true. to work. We're going to be filmed again right now while we're talking afterwards in the workroom. And I mean, then you're just at work all day, the, pretty much. we finally get to sleep. That's I finally like, get to, like, rip off this duct tape. And that's like, my impression of reality shows, that you're basically at work all day long. Because, I mean, they're just... You've got to shoot so much fucking B-roll in order to make know. one episode. And it's insane. These cameramen on this show are, like, so skilled and savvy by this point with this show. They, like, know exactly, like, I'm who sure. to capture a close-up of and when. So they always get it. It's, but it still, doesn't make, it still doesn't mean that it doesn't make the production schedule long. Yeah, hard it probably days. is. I mean, plus it's, like, that's not something you can just put to, like, the looks that they're doing, you can't just All put together in, All of that takes a like, long time. It doesn't minutes. just take the, like, 30-second commercial break for them to put all that yeah, stuff on. Yeah, that's, like, like, a couple hours, you know? Like, the, you know, it's got to bake first, unlike, the first layer. Yeah, unlike Beyonce, these queens did not wake up like this. Like, that is not something. Like, it's, <laughs> oh, it's come on. So you know Beyonce more, probably even has she that, does like, not, scary alien face that Tyra has when she doesn't have her makeup on, like she showed on her show? The difference between queens and Beyonce is Beyonce has an entire team of people to help her. That's true, that's these true. These queens are like, girl, like, I'll wait two I'm hours. doing this by myself, <laughs> and I'm creating art here. Like, this takes time. Yeah. Like, this is art, and I'm I'm making it, like, right now. So, you understand. It's a lot of steps. I'm sure it's just a really fucking so long day. So, obviously, things like that, like, you know, when you're young, like, Violet Trash, you just reacted how she would react as a real person, and it blew up, and then they got blown. And the people who got blown the best were Trixie, Trixie Mattel, mm -hmm. and Ginger Minj, and they become directors of their own teams. <coughs> 
for, you know, this Glamazonian <laughs> Airways, the first airline run entirely by drag queens. I'm just like, this is like, I want to fly on this airline. I was actually really bummed that it wasn't for like a real airline. I know. It was clearly based on like Virgin America when you saw That's like the actual talent. Yeah. It was clearly... And because, I thought that maybe... Because I remember those videos. It's like they turn them they into still, musical numbers. They still and have those. They, they still see them when you go on Virgin America. They have one, but actually their, most, their more current Virgin America like safety video has my old dance teacher from high school in it because he's like a, he's a hip-hop <laughs> kind dude. of like when my old sitar teacher turned up in a twix commercial yeah you're like wow you're like wait oh you actually get work doing this i was yeah i was <laughs> just saying like wow you you actually book gigs holy shit i'm very impressed that is a probably a nice paying gig i shouldn't that video i shouldn't say flight. this to you but i'm proud of you you did I'm good i'm proud of you <laughs> dance teacher <laughs> Good job, good job, sitar guy. A sitar guy. You got a lifetime supply of Twix you want to share with us? Oh my gosh, I would love that. He probably doesn't eat Twix anymore. Probably not. But anyway, <laughs> um, I, I was actually really bummed that I, I would have thought that they would have used, Virgin America would have used this video just because... Oh my it, god, I would love to watch this before every flight. It's completely Virgin America's humor. Like, imagine how many times there are people who are afraid of flying. If you put this video on, they would be so distracted from the fact that a flight has started. Oh that, my like, gosh. They would be, like, so content. I wish they had that video. So, Mar my friend Marlene has a horrible fear of flying. Oh my gosh, she should watch this video. Oh my god, I know, because the last... Tell her to save this shit. The last time we were flying back from LA, back up here, like, the flight down was okay. It was a little rough. Like, my she, like, Indian burned my arm. But... I was like, okay, fine, I'll get you drunk, and, like, I'll make you listen to, like, really relaxing music. Oh, no. And so, actually, it worked out fine. I got her drunk at the bar and put her headphones on and was like, what do you want to listen to? She's like, Stevie Wonder, and she was, like, singing Supernatural as we were taking off, and I was like, yes, plan achieved. All right, we're but good next to go. Time, but next time, if Glamazonian Airways I just need to, like, thing. download it onto my phone and be like, oh, Marlene, look at the pretty pink pictures. Look at look <laughs> at all the pretty queens dancing. Look, aren't they fun? And okay. look, look at all the hot pit crew in their I don't know if that would actually work seats. on her because she's a kid now, so she's probably all privy to my tricks. Oh, I don't think that. That does not eliminate the glory of looking at oh, yeah. these beautiful men. Um, I plus it's like if those are the passengers, who was not gonna fly this airline except straight men? But do we want them? No, no, it's okay. I don't think I think it's okay. But this looks oh my god, it was so good. But like when they were directing their teams, it was like Ginger Minj was very much like in control. Like okay, you're doing this, you're doing this, you're doing this. Sasha Bell was like oh the scat part, I really like that. That's really awesome. I like she was like I totally want that part, obviously because it was the best part and it was easiest one because if you're lip syncing to scat. You could do fucking anything with your with your mouth because it's scat and it, you get away with it because it's all happening inside and it's not just the lips. But to moving. that end, though, too, you also do know you need to know what you're doing if you're going to be doing that part, though, because so, I think like a certain I thought Miss Kasha Davis. I always want to say her name like that. Anyway, I thought this is Kasha Davis. Mrs. Kasha Davis. She's married. Oh, she is. I don't know, but if it's Mrs., you means you're married, right? No, well, I don't know. Miss is like. No, I'm like, you know... A I thought spinster. it was related through her drag family, so I wasn't really entirely sure. But it is the Mrs. Kasha Davis. She totally nailed it, but I think that she has a lot of, like, stage performance, so she she really did kind of plan what she wanted, because you can take it too far one or the other way, and it might mm -hmm. not land or work as well on stage. It's true, and obviously Ginger Minch can see that, because, like, when Sacha Bell she's like, oh, yes, of course, uh-huh, yeah, it's really great. I thought Ginger so, Minch was a Mrs. great Sacha leader. Davis, you're going to be the scat, because she's like, I'm not giving this to you, Sacha Bell. I, from what I've seen of you on the show, it wasn't, there wasn't that much, like, performance quality, really. Well, I mean, you know, like we were like, talking about in the interview a little bit, like, she just kind of is slightly forgettable. You know, and, like, she... I don't know. She just didn't have like a real personality that she Nothing was pitching. Was really, there was like, no real super stand perspective out. that she was promote that that through which her character is doing. Like you know, like Katya has like the Russian thing, the Russian glamour comedy thing. I think we know? can all and, like, point to a queen, something. and everyone has a thing but that Kasha, we associate. Uh, Kasha, um, Sasha really didn't have that. No, she came in as Barbarella at the beginning with red hair, but like didn't but, like, understand that's why. Been done. You know, like, why were you doing that? Like, there's Bear Barella here in San Francisco with, like, Lady Bear and yeah. Peaches Christ. Like, I don't need your Sasha Bell version I don't need, of like, it. a cheaper version of it. No like, offense, it just sweetie. I don't mean it like that. It's just, I like, feel like there's, just like, make your own I, Maybe she queen just wasn't, wasn't in, able to be totally herself. Like, she was incapable of doing it on camera. Like, maybe something about this situation, like, kind of put her back a little more in her shell. 
and she didn't show us everything because I bet there's something more. But yeah, that album. There's a reason why she got picked. I just don't feel like we got to see it. Yeah. And that really that sucks for everybody. You know, I'm sure she's disappointed. And everybody else is too. But yeah, I thought that Ginger Minj was the superior leader. She didn't really. She was very take charge, but she had like her. But own, was even though she fun. was nervous about it, she like did what she could, and she like really sold. But I it. thought that that was told was a perfect example of like faking it till you make it, so to speak. Like she. Didn't feel super confident, like, in her dance skills. I don't know what she has. But she kept she the has, performance up, you know. And I don't know if she has, like, a stage manager background at all, or if she's ever staged a play or anything like that, but I thought that she did really well. And I thought that she was, the good thing was, like, she was firm, but she was also really hilarious. And that's kind of the personality. That yeah, comes she was like, like, I wanted diversity on my team. Like, looks you like, look Arian over there, it looks like Arian Airlines. It was too, she's hilarious, and I, I really enjoyed she's her. And I thought her clip. team... I thought, I mean, obviously her team totally fucking killed it, but I think it's also because she did, she put people in the parts that suited them well. Everyone but Sasha Bell didn't have a problem with but it. But Sasha Bell was all the one, only one who wasn't really like that great of a performer. This mm -hmm. is the first time we actually got to see Jasmine Masters be good at something because everything else Probably was on the has second been, like, episode. Busted. I know, but she, they've done a lot of stuff already. RuPaul put these girls to work. Like, yeah, that's true. These girls have done so much. I mean, hello, they did that. That blow dual in the face fashion thing. They had to do their runway thing, and they had to memorize the lip sync and the choreography to the Glamazonian Airways pre-light video You know, the challenge. way that they like edit and, like, it sometimes, oh. it makes you think, or it makes it look like it's way easier than it really is. It's like, because it comes off so seamless the way they've edited the show together, but like, you know, they know exactly know where the drama is, like in the rehearsals for the Glamazonian Airways challenge. It was like, Trixie was not having Violet's, like, youthful, like, attitude. That was hilarious and really good like, and weird. It was so... So wait, hold on. And then later they were, like, all friendly again. I meant so to ask clearly. you this question when we were watching the episode, though. Is Trixie, like, a school teacher or something? Because the way that she, like, put Violet in her place... I felt like I was in class. Like the way she, she did. Oh my god! She was just like she's like okay, you're talking, and when we're talking, we're not what. I felt like I was at summer not camp listening. or second grade. And I was, or like, was like Trixie, you are like 24 years old. You're I was like, only bitch, like three relax. years older than her. Relax. She's like okay, Everyone don't relax. get it twisted. Calm down, public school. And I'm like, okay, she's yeah. And then she went ahead. She's and called Violet Public School, and I was like, oh. I'm like, I feel like she's being, like, the Trixie character in that moment, because okay. the Trixie obviously, you know, the real man behind Trixie was yeah. that he grew up poor, he grew up Native American, you know, so probably went to some I version of was, public school. I know to a certain degree it was Trixie talking, but to another, but, but that's why I raised off, the it question. It was so, like, that was deep shade. Yes, you know? it was like, oh, the shade of it all, but... I, that's why I just wanted to raise the question. I know part of it is Trixie, but in non-Trixie time, is she a school teacher of some yeah, sort? Because like, I just what? the way that she just snapped, like the way that she snapped back so quick, but like it it didn't seem bitchy, but like if you listen to it, you're like, oh man, that's rough. Like, I don't know. I it was hard I was unable to tell. But yeah, they very clearly got over it very quickly. Move the fuck on. Because like, they were showing, like, pictures. It's like, this is my first time at drag. Trix is, like, showing Violet. They were clearly, like, all, like, friendly. Like, yeah, and then right was away. it... And then Miss Fame Miss busted Fame... out. She's like, oh, Miss Fame, get your pictures. And then oh, yeah, Miss like, Fame oh, was yeah. busting out her sad pictures. Oh, my gosh. There's always and that's a when... sad... That's oh, a bad and that was the story. other thing. That was the other thing with um, Lennon Parm's Twitter. She had said the same thing we did in our review, which was, oh, my God, girl, don't talk about your sad stories. She's like, that's always the kiss of death. The kiss of death. It totally is. I'm actually really glad that it didn't really work out that way that but it survive, sounds off such loud alarm bells when that happens You're yeah because like, oh. it's like she was like having trouble this episode too <laughs> and it's like maybe part of it was she was like this is really getting me today like this picture of her grandfather who was i know murdered. and then started choking yeah her grandfather who raised the grandfather that raised him because his mother was a drug and alcohol addict apparently mm -hmm. um but yeah, his grandfather was murdered when he was 15. And he talks about getting the phone call, and I was just like, oh my goodness. Like, that's, yeah. Like, there's, you know, they always have tragic stories. Well, and of this course, is a everybody bad has one, like a know? bunch of, tra everybody has tragedy in their life. But but Violet was also so like, you know, like, but look, you survived it, and you're here, and it's fucking amazing. And, and see, I'm like, I think that's actually who Violet early is, not the like, exactly. I hate Michelle Vazash. Like, like, she's I just, also super confident, and she has reason to be legitimately. Like, she's got talent. She is very She talented. was very good. She was very good in the actual challenge. I thought she was adorable. She was kind of bitchy in the rehearsal because she was like, no, pull it tighter, tighter, tighter. I want to show off how small my waist is. But also, 
also like all like I mean people who are actors and performers are like that because most of the time they're gonna want to go through the emotion so to speak yeah, so. and so if she wants to use that to channel it fucking make it tighter whatever she wasn't trying to be mean you guys have 20 minutes but to learn also the high, a seven yeah, yeah <laughs> the to learn a seven situation. hour fucking choreography pearl is like i am not having this but i love pearl she's so uh, you know i'm hilarious pearl is growing on me the uh, like i really we got to know a lot about pearl in the untucked episode it was very kind of not shocking but it was so most we've heard her talk in a real like yeah, the whole time like, that we've been watching the show they're like so like she's just like really supportive of other people in a way no she's completely 100 like, very very sweet but like in a certain way kind of like sounds like daria like everything that she says is kind of all in the same like voice yes. tone <laughs> and so i can see where because i have i've been accused of such things as well of having like the same kind of like monotone voice where like people can't tell if you're being serious if you're mm -hmm. being nice if you're being bitchy and so I feel for her. I feel for her <laughs> as a fellow monotone sounding sister. But yeah, she's got that Daria thing where like, this is the way she sounds. Doesn't mean that she's not a nice person. She's very like, sweet. This is like the And persona. very encouraging. And was like, not, you know, there are people that when she you. She can be, she's critical and bitchy and funny. Like, you know. But, but there are people not... where you can like ask them a question and they'll make that an excuse to talk about themselves 20 minutes. She was like, including everyone in the conversation. She didn't like, she doesn't. She didn't like likes hog. to be the center of attention, but doesn't like to be the center of attention. I don't really know how to put that. She's in. not a hog about it. Mm -hmm. She's like, I, I will do the best I can with my moment, and I will take it. Her, she was um, like, yeah. her, what was it? Runway look for oh God, Jet, Jet Set, Set Eleganza. Eleganza. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was fabulous. I loved it. It was a great look. She looked great, and I think she looked like a rich jet setting she like, seriously young, did like fashion bitch yeah she looked like one of those kids from like rich kids of instagram or something yeah, getting she, on like a you know, private like jet like from that documentary born rich like the kind that really does spend eight thousand dollars on a bottle of champagne and then decides to fly to paris that afternoon to i have to go it's hard life is like hard and i'm sad and i'm tired i need to get a new phone grandpa gooby just died <laughs> I just I, I'm I'm digging it. I think I can see I'm I'm not seeing like the the full performance aspect yet. Mm -hmm. Um, you know I'm not seeing that yet. But like you know, she was better in the challenge than I think that the, the rehearsals. You know because they always build up the drama before the final right, product of, of the show. So like you know they were it's getting reality TV that singer. like you know her and Miss Fame being paired together made her look a little worse because Miss Fame was like not knowing how to move like this fame has no which is rhythm. weird when she's like in her drag and she walks she walks like she saunters and she moves her hips but when she was trying to dance it was like in her jeans and t-shirt you know it was just like not happening and then she just like got stiff when she actually was in drag i think she psyched herself out so much that like she really dragged herself down and um like pearl kind of like brought it a little more in the actual like performance. performance so i was like okay well she did it but i could see how stiff miss fame still was I mean, and miss everybody fame was looked kind of gorgeous especially when she was playing <clears throat> the ukulele during oh that yeah and that, that i thought that she, was... lo she loosened up a little more that was that worked better she looked the part but then again i like i'm going back to i'm gonna go back and stand by my original statement girl cannot dance a girl does not have rhythm no she who knows Period. if she has it at all like from i don't that, think from so that, like you can't see i'm she sorry has. Like, even the choreographer, when he's like, just move your butt. Like, like she just, like, like uh, could uh, not uh, do it. And uh, it was... Uh, it was all robotic. It was so... Sh it, it, it pained me to see someone like so pretty not be able to do that. up that girl's joints, and she just never got over them. Oh, my God, I know. And poor... That was rough. Um, during, even in the workroom, they were talking to her about it, and then she would, they were like, you know, Ginger was like, I was just calling it like I see it. I mean, decide to start a turf war. It's not West Side Story. Because, like, the Jasmine Masters had to get in there. Because she was a super dramatic woman. Instigator. She loved it. Even in Untalked, she was all over it. She was, like, talking trash, like, calling people out. Like, she's honest. Like, her criticisms are not invalid. I feel like she's, she's speaking the truth, but she's deliberately making it more dramatic and you know, trying to instigate. I think she's, yeah, I, I don't, I but think she she's giving like, the producers know, what they just, want. You can't just look good, you know, you have to actually know how to perform, which is true. But Miss Fame but does come out like, and straight up say, I just want to be a runway model. And she's perfect and she at she realizes it. that she has to be more than that. She's actually like, she does talk too much. Because RuPaul even like, asked her if she, can you, have you had acting experience? And she gave this whole like, spiel. And she's like, well that, you just described a Craigslist ad. Because like, it was, it went on forever. But like, I loved what she said back to Jasmine Masters. She's like, well, you know, 
some of us don't want to spend our whole career in the clubs. And then Jasmine's like, well, you're in the wrong competition. Then. I'm like, actually, no. This competition is about like going beyond just being a star in the nightclub scene. It's about being like a real star, like for everyone, like so everyone knows your name. Like that's the point of the show. And I think Jasmine isn't quite getting that, but she turned it out in her part of the challenge. So and Miss Fame did it. So, so that's what it comes that, down you know. to. Yeah, you have to have. There's just something about Miss Fame that does just strike me as like a runway print model. Like yeah, her and Violet. Well, Violet has a big personality. I think that she could do a lot more beyond that. But I think that the two of them, Violet and Miss Fame, you could plop them in front of a like any sort of fashion magazine camera or on a runway, and most people would not be able to tell you the difference. Mm-hmm. Like, is that a queen or not? And I think they look fabulous, and I think that they wear clothes well because they're really tall and they're fucking skinny, and like they look like a goddamn mannequin. Like, what else would you want? But in terms of like performance spark, I get that more from every other queen than Miss Fame. I think that she's gorgeous, yeah. but I think that she's especially not from that shown episode, that yet. I feel like she that's like what she really wants to do. That's it. That's what she sees herself as. It's what she sees herself the show bringing to her, like, she wants to just do, she wants to be a fashion girl. She says it a billion times over. It's true. It's very clear. But she did say now that she realizes that if she wants to do better in this competition, she can't do just that. Yeah, but, but doesn't, does she have more than that? But we'll see. We'll see if she can pull something else out. Well, that's, that's it. We're getting more from My last point is that she does talk a lot. So, to bring that in, all, I mean, that doesn't bother me. I talk a lot. But, I guess what I'm trying to say is that, like, mm-hmm. I'm afraid that she's just talking a lot about wanting to, like, bring it and that what she's going to do is more of that challenge. And it would be a shame to see her peace out early without having really her, like, grow something. a little bit or develop an act or something. Like, she'll get, I hope she'll come away, she probably will come away from this with, like, more than she went in with in any event. So Yeah, I know. I just hope to see her around longer because I like her, you know. And I do really she's like, like her. She's smart and she's complimentary of other people. Even if she started the competition with that epic like moment of shade, just tore up Max's paper. I still can't get over that. I was just like, oh my god. Oh, poor little Max. So but cute. Max so is sweet. like, <laughs> I really liked Max in the challenge too. And the Jet Set Eleganza was very old glamour. Oh, it was beautiful. Old Hollywood. I thought she looked great. It's so amazing. I just like I every episode. I want all of her clothes. I I know right like. It's perfect, like classic old Hollywood, but it's also very sellable today. Like, and I just it's love super the, like, on trend, crazy, which like, is really obnoxious space of me to British say. Guy from Wisconsin, like thing that like he does all the time. I just love how polished and put together and thought out every single look, like all of the time for him. Like him and Katya, I think Katya too. I thought her Jet Set Eleganza outfit, at least for me, fucking saved it. I love the like Barbie stewardess outfit. I thought it, it was, was so, so fucking cute. Good with the little I would wear hat her offset. entire outfit, pillbox hat and all, any also anywhere. any day of the week, anywhere you anywhere if it's sunny out. Like it was like I it was it. fucking adorable. She looked like a super adorable like Barbie stewardess. She was just so just like cute. Jordan Sparks, the guest judge with Olivia Newton. I was like Olivia Newton John is here and Jordan. Yeah, Sparks I was like, but why here? is Jordan Sparks here? Like, well, just like Jordan Olivia Sparks Newton. is like a super fan, and Jordan Sparks looked amazing. By she's the way, been looking, and she was a really good guest judge. She's been on Fashion Police before, and I love her. I think that she's really. I don't know very much so about like, her okay, other than she I won American Idol, but she's a really great guest. She always gets. She's she gives better critique than most celebrity guest judges do. Yeah. And uh, she seems really sweet and down to earth, and like she just keeps looking better. Like her, I don't know, she changed stylists or whatever, but she's looking good. I liked seeing her here, and I liked Olivia Newton John, who seemed to have an extra filter on her close ups in this episode, it seemed, but I couldn't tell because Logo does not air this show in HD. Get on that logo. I know. What is up? I want this show demands high definition. You want to see everything. Yeah, and like I don't want to when we switch it over to fit to screen. I don't want it to look all weird. And yeah, pixelated. but maybe it's a favor because you need that illusion, so they can't put it in HD because you need <laughs> the illusion when it's on TV. Oh please, we've seen these. But episodes I've seen it in HD and it on Hulu fine. Plus, and it still looks amazing. So we can have it on HD on my Direct TV or on Comcast or on everything. Or just how about all of them? So let's do that like forthwith, like soon I by the next understand. season. Stop. Because- shooting it in standard. I hate the No, box. they shoot it in HD. They 
the air it in standard. That makes even less sense than <laughs> I what know. I just said. I don't understand why, because when it's on Hulu, it's in HD. It's I know, gorgeous. that's why. It's so gorgeous. As you've and already heard s- me tell the story <clears throat> multiple times, I got so frustrated trying to watch the fucking pilot. I went on Hulu like, fuck this, I'm just going to watch in HD. Wasn't in HD, downloaded the logo app, airplayed it onto my TV. I was like, ah, better. It's in HD. And it doesn't look weird and people that look stretched out or pixelated and... We're size queens. What the fuck do you want from us? This is what we do. <laughs> I know. I want the, I want the biggest I can get. <laughs> the biggest <laughs> and brightest I can get my drag race, the better. And so I want that to happen. So I'm going to be trying to do that in myself. <clears> I just, <throat> you know. I still have to do so many extra steps just to watch it in HD. But nonetheless. <laughs> my anger still, compels me to take those extra steps. Katya looked amazing. But yeah, oh my gosh, that. That she had that long, difficult monologue to do at Ooh, the beginning. Girl. It was and just she so... she knew it from the beginning. She's like, I am not gonna do well on this. And it's like like you say, like if you have that inner dialogue that's like already telling you that, like that's, that's what you're gonna good. get. I know. And I was really sad to see her let that like get her. But she got over it for the rest of the performance. She didn't let it like actually defeat her. She kept going. She didn't like stop and look nervous or do anything weird. No, no, no. I she think continued she, the she performance sold the whole what way she through. had. But that she being was, said, it was, she didn't have all that much. Yeah, that that monologue was that was really tough, and like the, the like the what two hours they probably realistically had to learn it. Like she did not get it down, and it was really sad to see. But then at least at the very least, like we knew it was going to land her in the bottom, and she knew it too because she was telling herself that the whole episode, and that's what happened. But so I, she like better a part not of do me it like again. almost loves that she's just so like matter of fact like nah I fucked it up I deserve to be here. It's like oh my but god. But I was glad that she nailed the lip sync. Now this was a good lip sync for your life. It was. This was the first really good one I think that we saw the two that have happened. But <laughs> nonetheless, this I was the first one was very lackluster and this one was really good because of Katya. Like Sasha Bell was doing her campy thing and she was like being so like she had all the words down. The lip sync was tight. But yeah, but I feel Katya like even just to begin with, yeah, but even just to begin with, for me with Sasha Bell, her outfit didn't do it for me. No, I hate the I fucking love, like long mermaid no, hair. Sometimes I, no, no, it's Lady Bunny hair. She took Lady Bunny's wig basically, but it looks really cheap. But she really didn't have cheap. Lady Bunny's um, personality yeah. to like sell that huge, big, poofy thing. And they're like, yeah, she was using it to cover herself up. Yeah, but, but it like ate her alive. That. Yeah, it, it does, didn't. It doesn't. It didn't give up, her anything. It doesn't eat up Lady Bunny alive. It ate up Sasha Bell though. Yeah, it totally did. And like her, I was like her dress made her look stumpy. It was not a good looking dress. It wasn't a good dress. It did nothing I was for not her a body. Fan of it. No. And Ka- compared to Katya's dress, I'm like, and of course oh, Katya so was cute. like prepared for performance. Because that bitch, Oh, she like, was like, I'm in the bottom two, time to go lip sync for my it life. It wasn't even just the splits. It was, like, <gasps> the fact that she had, like, in her persona, she was, like, performing for real. Like, she was Olivia Newton-John in that moment. Right oh, in front totally. of Olivia Newton-John. And she turned it out like that. And that, like, like you said, like, she did, like, she's, like, the the landing split jump where she's, like, I want to pound my vagina into the floor so, so hard that the building shakes. You know, and it looked like, I was like, oh my God, do you even have testicles anymore or a I bag know. of mush? Like, what did, how? I, I hope you're wearing a cup. So, like, what was, that was impressive. That I was think, a good like, the show split. steal, I, like, you didn't even look at Sasha about, sorry, girl. You really and did it. You wanted to watch Katya the entire Katya time. Katya was standing on the runway, lip syncing. She throws her arms up and starts doing this fucking slow splits while she's, like, making eye contact. Forward. Forward. Towards making the eye audience. contact, like, fucking creepy ass Rick Grimes from Walking Without Dead. Breaking. Not breaking and lip syncing all of the words until she hits the floor. The muscle control, the tat, like, all of it, I was just like, oh, oh my that God. damn. Like, queen. I am like, going to go pay to watch you perform wherever the hell you are. She is going to be on that drag race tour. She better she's be got, on that drag race tour. She's got to. And she has to do some sort of gymnastic routine or something. Like, oh, my God. She, I, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. So oh, the, slay, the upside, slay, slay. The it was amazing. The lining was that we got to see her perform in a lip sync, and we got to see that she's got the good. Oh, but, like, we, that was not you know, really a like, question. Because there are some comedy queens who are like, okay, but then, like, just like when Jinx Monsoon finally had to do a lip sync, and it was like, damn, that was fucking amazing. It was so perfect and great. I was like, okay. Then I am, uh, I, so I can see that you really do have it. And there, so, so nobody can really doubt Katja because she's a comedy queen, but she's also like, a, you know, a glamour, she's also like a glamour comedy queen. 
you know. Yeah, which was very apparent in, like, her outfit, too. It was, like, she turned it out. She, I seriously cannot get over it. It is so cute. I want that outfit so bad. Someone make me that skirt and top. It's, like, <laughs> she's, like, you know, I'm a big figure skating fan, and there's the big thing. Like, and you could tell. The good it... technicians who don't have the personality and performance quality. Mm -hmm. Or the people who have the performance quality but don't have the biggest jumps, but everything else they do is so super difficult that they should get credit for that. Like, she's a good mix. She's, like, those skaters that are a good mix of both that can do all their... They can do all the really difficult things, and they can do it, like, with a great aesthetic value as well. Totally. And that's, it's really awesome to see, like, more and more of that as each season progresses in the show. And we're really getting it. Like, even, like I said, the young queens, the younger queens are really the ones who have the more polished looks than the older queens in this season. But everyone, I can't wait to see Kennedy Davenport have to dance on the show because, like, that's what she says her thing is. Like, she's, you know, I spin, I twirl, I flip, like... Like, well, I've got to see her lip sync for her life to see her do these things. So I'm wondering if she... Because sometimes she seems a bit lackluster herself in her performance. She seems a little wound up tight. You know, like, she's still, like, clearly got something there. Like, she called it from the very beginning that Sasha Bell was gone. Like, when like, Sasha Bell came in, she's like, sorry, no, sorry, next. <laughs> and that, totally, completely right. <laughs> Kennedy Davenport completely called that. Like I just thought it was beginning. super funny that Sasha Bell came in all on her high horse. Like I see every season of RuPaul's every, Drag Race, and I've broken the code. Well, RuPaul announced from the beginning. Well, the code has been changed. So obviously, it really did because Sasha. Well, she said I overthought it. I was overthinking it. You know, like that was you know if I had this to do again, I would probably not do that. I would probably just try to be more myself. I. You know, and that's, hopefully she learns to do that. I don't know what will happen with her career after this. Like, her booking fee probably will get raised. Um, well, now that they can say RuPaul's Drag Race I mean, that'll instantly Sasha get Bell. you some more. And they like, and people, because I think people would be interested, like, you know what? I want to see what she does in a club. I'm curious. I will give you that chance, and I will buy a ticket. So if you ever come to San Francisco, Sasha Bell, I will buy a ticket to your show. I'd be interested. And I would be interested to see how you perform. Because I think it could be good. It could be good. I think everyone's got... You clearly all have the talent to Because you got There's on the show. There's a reason why all of you got on the show. Why Rue picked you. So, you know, just because you didn't have the chance to show off those sets of said Or skills you didn't yet. take the chance to do it. Because they had the chance. Yeah. Let's not get it twisted. RuPaul would be the first to say you had a chance. But I feel like I can't wait to get to the episode when RuPaul finally says, like, I have officially had... Because he says it in the, in the preview... For the next episode, you see him saying like this episode, this the Shakespeare, the, the Shakespeare episode, which is following this up. Like you get a sense that he is like not taking any of this excuse bullshit because he blows up at them. It seems a little bit like I'm like really seriously like not having this right now. Like yeah, there's a moment. I remember that. I just I, I'm it's and so hard to like cries, parse out these and it's like trailers. oh my gosh, like I now I have <coughs> oh the drama. We thought there was no drama. This season, because everyone was so nice, but oh, we were so wrong. Just because, yeah, just because they weren't extra bitchy in the first episode, we're like, oh, we're, it we're was so just friendly. It was just the calm before the storm. I know we're so That's naive. All it was. Everybody's all nice to each other. It's gonna be a season of sisterhood and love and puppies and rainbows. Oh damn! Yeah, like they're still not picking Ch Violet Chachi from what we've seen of the next oh, episode. Yeah. They're still leaving her last, and I'm like, she I feel bad that she's. She can perform, and they're like, and she always complains, she doesn't get what she wants, and it's like, well, you basically just said that this role is perfect for you, but I'm going to give everything things that everyone thinks that they're not perfect at, and I'm like, Kennedy Davenport, is that a good idea to have your team do things that they're <laughs> not good at when you want to win a challenge? I don't know why anybody ever thinks that that is and the then plan that's going to help them win. It doesn't I've work. It's like every time I hear it on a reality show, I'm like, haven't you seen a reality show before? And if you know when they try and do challenge? the risk? Yeah. And then you know how that team usually just ends up on their ass? Fucking top model, top chef, fucking any goddamn reality competition show. A risk Don't that they're you unfamiliar know. with. Yeah, you know? whenever you try something... and be like, I'm going to push my comfort zones. Don't. This isn't the place for no, it. No, something <laughs> that you know and you want to explore and you have skills to do it, that's one thing. That's one thing. But if it's something that you do not have skills for. And yeah, if you were like, oh, I've never height. tried to be a ventriloquist, but I'm going to do it today for the show, and I know that I only have two hours to learn how to be a ventriloquist, that's a fucking recipe for disaster. It makes you look like a goddamn idiot. But if you're like, oh, I can juggle, and I have, like, circus performer background, so maybe if I 
juggled yeah. swords or something. I don't know. I'm not a circus person. But if you like found well, that's something... what Ivy Winters does. Exactly. Like if Ivy Winters. Winters. But that's what she does. But and I would say like if if you're if you're already trying to like explore something that you know a little bit about that's already in your field, fine. But if you're trying to go like way left field over something that you can barely pronounce, like why are you trying to do it? Why? It, it just seemed like an odd choice. So the, there's so much drama coming in this episode. I have episode. a feeling. I, have I am a very feeling. excited. And I hope that, like, because I'm sorry, Shakespeare just like, oh my Mac gosh. Mac bitch. Mac bitch. <laughs> I That's cannot wait to see favorite. Mac bitch. What was the other one? Oh, fuck. I don't remember. Mac bitch just killed me, though. I, oh, it was so good. So I'm like, oh my lord. But obviously, like, you know. Why wouldn't you? Oh, Romy and Juliet. Romy and Juliet. That's it. Oh my God! I can't wait. I cannot wait. I hope it's some sort of weird. I hope they have some like Romy Michelle High School reunion lines in there. Though there has to be. There, oh God, if there, there isn't, to I'm going to be very upset. And who's going to be the guest judge? I wonder. They didn't show us. Oh, are you thinking it's going to be Waters? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know, but I. My gut tells me that he's not coming till later. I know. That's it feels like that's know. like a crowning moment. It feels like, but maybe RuPaul's like, no, my show is so great. You're in the middle, John Waters. I don't know. Yeah, who it's hard. knows? Who knows? But maybe it's like a really big challenge. I'm just so excited to see it. I can't wait. And luckily, I'm excited we don't to have s- to wait very long. I know. I'm excited just to see this acting challenge pan out. I was gonna say play out, but I was like, oh, God, oh you're, stupid! You're pod. so corny. Oh my god. Well, what was the jazz master said in this next episode? It's like, oh, you gotta pop that corn, feed the kids, or something. <laughs> Or in the untucked, it was in the untucked. I think was that what it, where it was? I just loved uh, Jaden Dior Fears being like, "My feet feel like the devil sent them on fire." Just like <laughs> kicking off her shoes, taking his shoes off. I'm like, all those girls. I actually I rode know. home on uh, like the train last night, and like there were these two like fully made up drag queens going to Alameda. What? Like there was a club like in Alameda where they were going to perform, and like we but talked you can't the whole get time to Alameda back. from Bart. Well, no, they had to take the bus. I know that's Oakland. a very, very yeah. long journey. But it's for like, them. like trust me, if we weren't performing and getting our booking fee, then like, you know, we wouldn't be going to Alameda. Of course not. But we were like chatting like the whole time and like cracking jokes all the way back, and then like this family from like Colorado that was on the Bart train was like so entranced by them, like this old like grandpa and his wife and like their kids who clearly like live in the East Bay or something, all like like oh my god, you guys are great, and they all like took pictures with them, and I'm like. For all of, like, RuPaul saying, like, you know, like, it's tr- very true that drag is inherently, like, sort of has a punk vibe about it. It's very much, like, mm-hmm. underground. It, because you, it's not an everyday thing. Like, during the day, you, unless you see drag queens walking around all the time during the day, then it's not, like, a fully mainstream thing. But the show has made it mainstream enough that, like, it was really cool that this family from Colorado was so, like, having fun and like not being judgmental it wasn't like yeah no it's, you know, it's like, always refreshing when like people... oh my gosh this is amazing like yeah. you guys are great like they loved it and they were like like they if they had known like if they hadn't had other plans they probably would have followed them to the club in alameda most likely because when did. are you gonna do that in colorado when ex- when exactly <laughs> i mean i'm sure you know we haven't seen a single queen on this show from colorado i don't think i don't think so either where's the denver queen it's too fucking cold apparently Ask, ask Trevor. He'd know. Oh, yeah. How's, how's moving to Denver in the middle of January working out for you, buddy? Real good? Aren't you glad you have a beard? Idiot. Yeah, no. I <laughs> told him to move to Denver because... No, I, I encouraged it, too. I mean, what was the other choice? Bozeman, Montana. We're um, oh, home of the wolf spider. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> Sorry. Next. <laughs> oh, the shade of the it shade all. The shade of it all. Oh my goodness. Well, these shady ladies, I think, have to turn in. Oh, yes. But oh my gosh, I'm having so much fun with this season of Drag Race, and I think y'all should be too. Um, I'm very much looking forward to the episode that you will be seeing tonight because oh, Shakespeare is upon us. I'm so excited. All right, y'all. Have a fabulous morning, afternoon, evening, middle of the night, 3 a.m. Whatever it is when you're listening to this, I am Samir Roy of Gambit Magazine, joined with Margaret Poupard of Gambit Magazine for life in the podcast world. <laughs> life in the podcast lane. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, life in the podcast drag race lane. Make sure you always stay tuned to our iTunes page or go to Gambit to download our podcast that premieres every single week. And I think it's also on our YouTube page as well. Ooh, and on our YouTube page. So you, you don't see the video of it, but it's like a sparkly thing and you can just like download the audio of it. See? Yeah, you have zero excuse not to listen to us every week. It's uh, free, y'all. It's free. Well, goodbye. Farewell, Peter Saint Adieu.